Hey guys, how are you doing? Amen. Amen. God is good. Okay. It was like a dawn moment, uh, moment we had there just now. I mean, we, I mean, if we've been in church for a very long time, we can sometimes be programmed to say all the time or amen when someone says God is good, isn't it? Or you can also have the option of actually saying, wow, God is really, really good. Amen. And actually, you know, just, I mean, if you're going to cry, cry. You know, it means you're alive. It means that you're alive inside. Amen. Because God is good. You guys realize that we are in the 21st century now? I'm kidding. I actually listen to Don Moen more than, I, I don't really know a lot of the newer songs and uh, I really enjoy the older songs, amen. Did you all know that it was Don Moen you all were quoting when you said all the time? Or was it like just, you know, everybody says that, so I'm going to go ahead with. Okay, very good, very good. Thank you so much, Pastor Clarence and uh, everybody, Pastor Debbie and everyone from C3 Subang. You guys have welcomed us with open arms and uh, we feel really, really uh, welcome. We feel really glad to be a part of you guys. And uh, to synergize with, you know, with you all and uh, for the sake of the kingdom. Amen. Amen. For the sake of the kingdom. So we're really happy. We're really blessed. And I really mean that from the bottom of my heart. Pastor Clarence has been so, uh, you know, so welcoming, so accommodating, so, how should I say, you know, a real, real genuine man of God uh, together with Pastor Debbie and we're really blessed. Amen. And... Uh, 2017, I don't know if you have heard or have been paying attention. There's so many people saying a lot of things, a lot of prophetic voices around preaching doom and gloom. I mean, that's, there's no difference between this year and every other year that has come before. But if you've paid attention, there have been a lot of people saying all sorts of things. And for some reason or another, they tend to focus on Malaysia a little bit more than they have in the past. You know, people from other countries, for some reason, they've been speaking a little bit about our country. And uh, how many of you have heard of this song, which, which goes a bit like this? Blessed are the shallow depth they'll never find. How many of you have heard of this, that you are buying me a cup of tea afterwards? Okay. And yes, I think there is some knowledge that we can do without. No doubt we need to increase in knowledge, we need to increase in uh, our stature, but there's just some pieces of information and knowledge, it's better of not knowing. Amen. It's better you don't know. Amen? And so, uh, I don't know, 2017, are you guys into New Year resolutions? Okay, how many of you, you know, you got a New Year resolution where you want to be a part of uh, more chat groups? WhatsApp chat groups, you want to be a part of more WhatsApp chat groups. How many of you all? Put up your hands. Okay, there's one person there. Bernard. Well, never mind. I think if you need, to, you want to be more a part of more chat groups, I think you need to stand in that corner over there. That's the corner where we pray for you, right? I think you need to stand there and you need to face the wall and think about your life. Seriously. If that's what your resolution for this year is, to be added to more chat groups. And how many of you are planning to start more chat groups and add your friends in? You also need to stand at the wall, blindfolded with a firing squad right in front of you. Okay? So, yeah, not really that much into resolutions because you tend to like break them, you know, one week into it. And, you know, God is actually not looking for us to make promises to Him. Isn't it? Because you end up breaking those promises and it's usually, Lord, I promise I will not do this again. Liar. You just did this the very next day. Isn't it? So He's not looking for apologies. He's not looking for promises from you. But rather, He wants you to understand the promises that He has made to you Lay hold of them in that deep place in your heart. Uh, not, not just when, you know, with everybody there because there's inertia and then suddenly when everybody stops, you also stop. But in that deep place in your heart of hearts, He wants you to lay hold of what He has for you. Amen? 
And so today I would like to share a little bit about what the Lord had placed in my heart regarding this church about two or three months ago. The Lord said, share this with this congregation. And this was about two or three months ago. And I said, okay, Lord, in four years time when they invite me to come share again, because there seems to be that cooling off whenever they invite me to share. And then there's four years before they invite me again. I said, in four years time, you remind uh, me about this and yeah, I will share this. I will mention it in passing to them. And the Lord says, do not mention this in passing, but I want you to focus on this, whatever the Lord had me share with you guys. And this was like a couple of months ago. And it caused me to think about it and to pray about it and to also study the scriptures a little bit more because it didn't seem like something that you would center a sermon around what the Lord had me share or have me share rather. So I had to pray about it a little bit more and I'm going to share about that today. But before that, one or two other things that the Lord has impressed in my spirit for everyone, for, I, I don't know, for the church in general. I believe in this new year, God is calling us on a journey. And that sounds very cliche. That sounds like heard this before. But seriously, this is not something that you just tell or teach a new beginner, a new believers class. I believe those that have been believers for many years, 50 years, 60 years, you are in your 80s or 90s. If you are here, I'll speak up. You know, <laughs> I believe, I believe this is meant for everybody. The Lord genuinely wants to take us on a journey. And it's my personal belief, it's for older people like me. People who've been believers for a number of years. I grew up in a Christian. I probably, I'm probably am a believer uh, longer than everybody here. Because I grew up in a Christian family. And this journey is something that I need to absolutely go on. Why? Because I've heard the gospel or what I believe is the gospel. I've been preached to ever since I was young. I've been in church ever since I was young. I've been serving in ministries ever since I was young. And sometimes your worldview and your outlook are shaped by your experiences, by what you feel is the good news or the gospel. And sometimes the Lord wants to just grab hold of your hand and just take you on a journey deeper and closer into Him so that you begin to realize who He really is. You know, who He really is. Hallelujah. Can I speak to the both of you guys afterwards? Cool. I mean, family, one family? Yeah. Okay, fantastic. Love to speak to you guys afterwards. Lord has fantastic plans for you guys. Amen. God is good. Amen. Amen. So one of the things that I really sense the Lord wants to take us on a journey. And my only advice to you is, I mean, journeys are generally very exciting, right? Uh -huh. It's a lot of fun. Are we there yet? Are we there yet? My only advice to you is, do not be afraid. Why? Because there may be concepts and ideas and mindsets that you have that the Lord may be stripping away from you, may want to strip away from you, and you are probably thinking this is established doctrine. This is the Word of God. I stand upon these things and do not be surprised that the Lord may be stripping some of these things away from you. And you know what happens when, that ha after, when, when you go on that journey? You begin to fall in love with God even more. If I say, do you love Jesus? Of course you will say yes. You know, mostly it's because out of fear or conditioning or whatever. But I think the Lord wants us to know Him for who He is. Not behind the lens of religion and dogma or whatever, but to know Him for who He is. And I really sense that very strongly in this season. A lot wants us to go on a journey and I'm excited. Why? Because I really want to go on this journey. Amen. So that's something that I believe is going to happen. Another thing is, now the Lord is also a mighty warrior, a man of war. Okay. And he has got his arsenal of weapons. But I believe in the, in the years to come, in the season, in the new season that we are stepping into, he is going to use the family unit as a very strong weapon. And that's something that doesn't strike, you know, you would think wouldn't strike fear in the heart of the enemy. But believe me, that is one of his strongest weapons that the Lord is going to use. So rather than just saying these things from the pulpit, 
I believe what we want to do in this church is to raise up strong families. Because then that family becomes like a church in their neighborhood and the enemy's kingdom will begin to be begin to unravel and fall. Amen? Amen. So this is something that we want to focus on. He is going to use families. Because all this while we see, you know, people who are, you know, uh, charismatic and, you know, really talented. They preach well. They go all over the place doing all sorts of exploits and things like that. Family at home. You know, just as Pastor Clarence said, he looks sad because his wife is not here. Some of you guys have your wife sitting next to you and you all look sad. You know, at least pretend to smile or something like that. So, you know, we, we can be these heroes where we go out and minister and, and, you know, we got all these programs and this and that and this and that, but the family unit is not really the way it should be. Guys, this is something I really sense is from the Lord. He is going to build a strong family unit and this is going to cause great downfall in the enemy's kingdom. Yeah. Amen. It does not sound cool. But if cool is what you're looking for, believe me, you're not going to get very far. Amen? It has to be grounded on, on proper godly principles. Amen? Amen? So now coming back to what I believe the Lord has called me to share about this church. But first, can we turn to 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 7? I'm going to look at this from a slightly different angle than how it's usually... Uh, Looked at 1 Samuel 16, verse 7. But the Lord said to Samuel, do not look at his appearance or at his physical stature because I have refused him. For the Lord does not see as man sees. For man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Amen. So this is uh, Samuel coming to anoint David as king. And very familiar, popular portion of scripture. That means God does not look at the appearance, you know, and, uh, but he looks at the heart. Now I want to look at it from a slightly different angle. And it's not just to look at the appearance of man, but also to look at the appearance of situations, the appearance of what we think God is like, and the appearance of also ourselves. Uh, sometimes we hide behind, or even we don't hide behind, people create you know, a facade for us, or we hide behind a so-called veneer of sophistication, you know, so that people won't know who we really are. And sometimes I feel, even though the whale has been torn into two, because when Jesus, there's still sometimes a whale there. We see God as how we think He is, or rather how people have portrayed Him to be. We want to get to the heart of the matter in every situation, in every circumstance, whenever we are dealing with people or with whatever, we don't want to just take it at face value sometimes. We want to go deeper have more insight and understanding about the real thing. And I believe God wants us to have that relationship with Him because the veil has been torn into two. Amen? So our concepts and understanding of God needs to also change if it needs to change. Amen? And so what did the Lord actually ask me to share specifically with this church? Now when I was here a few months ago, I came here for the first time uh, after a very, very long time. I'd never been to this sanctuary in years. You know, back then it, was, it looked different. It was smaller. You guys have grown so much. And when I came here, I got an impression 
visually, I, I, I begin to form a visual, how should I say, understanding of what was happening. I like the environment, I like the atmosphere, and as I begin to ponder a little bit, that is when the Lord started to say a few things about this church specifically. I'm not talking about any other church right now. Okay, there are things when I talk about, when I say church, it means the church worldwide. But this, I'm talking about this particular congregation here right now is what the Lord had me share with you or rather have me share with you. And uh, I needed to ponder this and pray about this because it was something that you mentioned to someone in passing, as I said earlier, over a cup of tea, you know, a, not something that you would preach a sermon about, but the Lord said, no, you don't mention it in passing, you it's really, really important. And as I begin to how, meditate a little bit longer on this, is when I begin to realize why this was really important. And impression that I got when I came here, many people can have many different impressions when they come into this place. They may come here and say, ah, it's the light show or the fashion show or whatever. They are trying to impress people. You could have people coming in and thinking that way. You know, because... Again, I'm not going to speak about anybody else. We can actually have an environment for that purpose. For the show. To impress. So that people think, wow, this is such a far cry from the place I used to come from. I think this, you know, I like everything about this place. And they may decide to stay. A way of hooking them. A way of hooking them. Because, and maybe some people do that, but I don't know of anyone. And I'm not speaking about anyone today. I'm only speaking about us. Amen? There is a point to all this. Am I rambling? Yes, but that's expected. I will sing a song. I will ramble. I will talk about stuff that is completely unrelated to anything that is supposed to be spoken about. But yes, there is a point to all this. And one of the things that I begin to realize is, this is sort of an extension of the pastor's heart. By pastor, I mean Pastor Clarence, Pastor Debbie. It is an extension of the pastor's heart. And what does it tell me? Because I was listening from the Spirit. Some people may come in and say, this looks like just like the, you know, the church, you know, and you know, it's all about the noise, it's all about the bluster, it's all about the smoke. And, and what not. I don't know why I said smoke, but anyway. <laughs> Maybe some of you guys need to. The New, new Year's resolution, some of you fellas. Okay. I meant dried eyes actually, not that you guys have it. Where was I, sorry? Before I was talking about, before the smoke. You punched me in the face just now, you don't get to speak. As I was walking to sit on the chair, he punched me in the face. No, seriously, where was I? I? I actually lose my train of thought very easily. I'm not... English, please. Yes. And what does that actually mean? Extension of the pastor's heart. You know, you've got like veins and arteries that are clogged up that in need of... Uh, what, what do I actually mean by that? I, I, simp I simply mean uh, what this church is saying. And I, I, I believe this is what it's saying. I didn't form this or form, I didn't pull it out of anywhere because the Lord said, share this. It says that you are welcome here. You are special. You are precious. You are loved. You are cherished, not just by us, but by the Lord himself. Now I said, okay, Lord, that's very nice. I can tell him, or even if I need to tell him, I can speak this over a cup of tea. You are buying me a cup of tea because of that song that, okay. <laughs> this is not a sermon to preach on, Lord. And the Lord was beginning to unravel a little bit more. And I begin to understand why he wanted me to share this. You see, as a condition of the heart which has come out in an extension in the place that we see. Why? Because if you are doing this for show, you be so careful that nobody spills a cup of tea. You know, here we allow people to come and eat. 
In fact, I wouldn't mind a plate of something that you're in on right now, bit, feeling a bit peckish. I wouldn't mind something to eat right now. We allow this to happen here. We don't care for the environment so much that you are not welcome to eat. Because if we are only interested in the appearances, we would be very careful. Those ushers actually would be bodyguards or bouncers. You know, making sure that you don't mess this place up. I've got a point, okay? I'm not there yet. Why am I taking some time? I'm a rambler. I ram That's what I do. You know, they said I've got half an hour. Did I not mention I come from an Indian organization? <laughs> half an hour, yeah. Everybody here you made a choice to be a part of this church. The Lord has called your pastors for very specific purposes. It needs to be a church that is outward looking, not just inward looking. Because if it was only inward looking, then this would be all appearances. And this is a nice, beautiful place. It tells me that I'm welcome here, that I'm special. You want me to feel welcome. Amen. Why? Because this is where the body of Christ meets. And once you have Christ in your life, great change can come to your family. Amen. Amen. Yes, a lot of Christian families are not yet seeing that. We need to. Amen. Amen. And so coming back to us, everyone here, part of this church, you need to catch that heart and that vision because this is an apostolic church guys believe me certain churches are called for certain things and that's fine this church is called to raise up people disciple people and send them out and if you have the wrong or you don't have the right mentality or the right heart and you are sent out you're not going to be able to create an environment where people feel that they are loved why because let's be honest sometimes when we hear people preach you just wanna you know just bang your head against the wall isn't it it's so schizophrenic sometimes today you know god loves you and then tomorrow he hates you uh, today is such a wonderful father next day is a child abuser i was having dinner with uh, pastor clarence yesterday and then the subject of Dawkins just, just popped up. The reason is, I showed him an internet meme, I don't know if that's what it's called, about the picture of Jesus knocking on the door. And then he was like knocking and says, let me in. And then the person behind the door says, why? And then Jesus said, so that I can save you. And then the person there says, from what? And Jesus says, from what I'm going to do to you if you don't open the door. <laughs> Sounds funny. We laughed. And then he mentioned Dawkins also thinks along those lines. Now, if I may sidetrack a little bit, I'm sure you've heard it being said that, you know, atheists, they don't actually have a day of celebration, but actually they celebrate April 1st, April Fool's Day. I find that offensive. You know why? Because if you are here right now and you're an atheist, believe me, you are welcome here. You are not a believer in God. Maybe you're not a Christian but you are a free thinker. You're not entirely there yet. Believe me, you are welcome here. You are not the enemy. If there's anyone here, you don't have to put up your hands. But that guy over there doesn't look much like a believer. He looks a bit of a, you know, a follower of Anton LaVey or something. Never mind. No, I didn't mean to call you a Satan worshipper, brother. I, I love you. If you are an atheist or you are thinking about something, you know something, I have more in common with a lot of atheists than I have with Christians. You want to know why? Because we both rejected the same Jesus. You rejected someone, I also rejected the same one. And the journey that he's been taking me on is bringing me to the real Jesus. Amen? So, yeah. Uh-huh. We need to have the right understanding of God. Otherwise, it becomes very rote or routine. And you know, you are doing ministry because you are asked to do, or you're not doing it from the heart that God wants you to do it from. Amen. And that comes back to the journey that I was talking on, talking about rather. When you start serving God because of that journey that He's taking you, it's going to be glorious. It's going to be glorious. Why? Because of that, you know. 
Amen. So be willing to allow the Lord to strip away even certain things that have been there for many years, mindsets, concepts. Allow the Lord, if He's telling you, this is how you need to change the way you think, allow it to happen. Amen. I sense that in this church with your pastors, your pastors have that heart. And because of that, they have created an environment where we need to move soon, I suppose, or have a new service. The place is already full. You know, the thing we were talking about the other day, who knows, maybe that may come to pass anyway. So, yeah, we need a bigger place, amen? Yeah. Or more services or something like that. Bigger place, place preferably because if there's more services, they would expect me to preach as well. <laughs> you know, so, yeah. <laughs> Amen. Where was I? Sorry. <laughs> Guys, I really had to pray for me to be able to bring this point across. Because I told the Lord, I mean, this is not something that you want to preach about. But the Lord says, no, I want you to share on this. And so, I hope, because as, as you know, I come from an Indian background, uh, Tamil is my preferred mode of communication, but I pray that I would be able to succinctly, succinctly put a point across with some amount of clarity that you understand this with the help of the Holy Spirit. You guys need to catch what the Lord has placed in the pastor's heart. We need to create an environment within us where the Lord reigns and an environment around us where people feel welcome and honored even though they may not be what someone your mother would want you to hang out with. Okay? We don't judge anybody because these people have a story. We don't know why they are at the place where they are. And that is why I said we need to not look at appearances and go beyond that. This place has got an appearance. We need to go beyond that appearance. And see the heart of this. Likewise, we need to create a sort of an environment where others feel safe. Not everybody feels safe around a Christian. Because they are judged for their lifestyle. For their lifestyle choices. For their hairstyles. Seriously. Having said that, that sister, if you did something with your hair, maybe, you know, yeah, a little bit. No. Christians are not always safe people to be around. And that is why you see many people rejecting the faith. Many people rejecting the faith. And they don't say it in a dumb way. Yes, the Bible says, a fool says in his heart that there is no God. I agree with that. That means a person who has rejected, do you know that Richard Dawkins is not an atheist in the true sense? He says the same thing. You cannot say with any amount, of, I mean with 100% certainty that there is no God. But he's a high level agnostic. Most people who consider themselves to be atheists are not atheists. They are agnostic. And they also will agree with the Bible that only a fool will say with 100% degree of certainty that there's no God, but you don't know. So why are these people rejecting what we think is God? It's because of a lot of religion and a lot of things that we think is Christianity and we tend to project that onto other people. In this journey, I believe the Lord just wants us to know more about Him. Amen? And I pray, I really hope that we catch this. I don't know if I'm able to, with, with some clarity, get my point across. You know, I, I'm still having that thing with the Lord. I said, this is a tea time. I just like to drink tea. <laughs> you know, so I told Lord, this is a tea time thing. You know, you just say something casually over a cup of tea. Lord says, no. Say it, you know, in, in, you know make this the main point. Why people need to understand. We are an apostolic church. Pastor Clarence is an apostle. He has called to be an apostle. It's an office. It's an office. Amen. And so whoever is in this church will need to have an apostolic mindset. If you are a teacher, an apostolic kind of a teacher, a prophet, prof, you know, apostolic mindset. Amen. So 
create that environment within yourself where you are welcoming of everyone regardless of anything regardless of their lifestyle choice regardless of anything because for so long we I, Christians we have this us versus them mentality yeah. I don't think there is a them it's just us whether you believe in Jesus or not because those people who are agnostics and have rejected Jesus they've rejected the right Jesus maybe we are believing the Christians are believing in the wrong Jesus in this journey the Lord wants us to know him for who he is amen I sense that in the pastor's hearts. There could be some visitors here and you say, ah, it's a very nice environment. Let me bust that bubble for you. It's not meant to look nice for the sake of looking nice. It's meant to tell you, I, I know there's some visitors here today, that you are precious and you deserve the best. You deserve the best. And... Uh, can we just uh, move on a little bit? Amen. Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 1 to 3. I'm also going to use this verse and look at it from a slightly different angle than it's usually looked uh, at from. Okay, and I believe I've got like, I was told half an hour. Five minutes ago, so I got 15 minutes. I, I will not take that long. <laughs> okay. Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 1 to 3. The word of the Lord came to me again, saying, What do you mean when you use this proverb concerning the land of Israel, saying, The fathers have eaten sour grapes? And the children's teeth are set on edge. As I live, says the Lord God, you shall no longer use this proverb in Israel. And when the Lord gave me this verse to preach, I said, Amen. Thank you, Lord. No, I was like, say what? What does that mean, actually? <laughs> huh? You Seriously, you, you want to get me in trouble, is it? You want to confuse the people and bore them to death. And as I begin to read, I, I understand clear, uh, clearer, a little better. But before that, please allow me to sidetrack one more time. Why? Do I still need to explain why? Eh? Okay. <laughs> this was written in the Old Covenant, in the Old Testament. Amen? So whenever we read something that was written in the Old Covenant, it can still benefit us greatly and immensely provided we read it through the lens of, of Jesus. Understand that a person called Jesus walked the earth. Amen? And through his finished work in the new covenant, we can read these scriptures and they will benefit us immensely. So if anybody says that the old testament or things in the old covenant are no longer relevant i have to disagree with them strongly but you cannot read them and take them from an old covenant perspective why then you are completely negating the fact that jesus christ walked the earth and i don't mean it like how dinosaurs walked the earth because i there was a picture of jesus riding a dinosaur i don't know what that was about i don't want to know if you know keep away from me i don't want to know but we must read these things from a new covenant perspective. Amen? Why? Because, I mean, honestly, uh, where does it say? It says in 2 John uh, verse 7, you don't have to turn to it. Anyone that does not confess that Jesus Christ came in the flesh is a deceiver and an antichrist. That's what it says in the scriptures. And also in uh, 1 John chapter 4 verse 1 to 6, it says, Test the spirits because there is such a thing as a spirit of the Antichrist. And what does the spirit of the Antichrist say? That Jesus Christ did not come in the flesh. Now, every preacher I know believes and loves Jesus. 
Every preacher I know preaches that Jesus Christ came in the flesh. But sometimes when they preach, they completely forget that Jesus Christ came in the flesh. And they preach a schizophrenic gospel. Today God is so good, He's so kind, He's so distinct. And then suddenly they will go to the Old Testament, Old Covenant scriptures and preach it as it is not from a new covenant mindset. That is wrong. Uh -huh. You cause confusion, especially to a younger generation. You know, Some fantastic, wonderful preachers, today they preach a fantastic sermon about God's love. But next week, their preaching is from the Old Covenant, which is fine. And then they will preach it as it is, completely forgetting that Jesus Christ walked the earth. And it brings condemnation. It brings confusion. This is a very schizophrenic kind of a gospel. So that is why people sometimes tend to reject. So amen. So we're gonna, I'm going to explain Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 1 to 3. And uh, from a new covenant perspective, basically it says that what this means is the fathers have eaten sour grapes and the children's teeth are set on edge. As long as I live, says the Lord God, you shall no longer use this proverb. Because at that particular time, there were many people who were going through difficult situations and they were blaming their fathers. They were blaming others. They were blaming their circumstance and they're blaming their situations. But here specifically, they were blaming the previous generations. And God is saying, this is nonsense. He was telling them, you are responsible for your own life. Your father eats a lemon, you will not be a sourpuss. Is what it basically means. Uh -huh. We need to take responsibility for our own actions. In this new season, we cannot say that this is how I've been brought up, this is how I've been raised, this is how I've been taught, this is how I've been programmed. I cannot change. No. Uh, Back then, the scientific community said that children only up to the point of being, them being five years old, they're able to absorb things like a sponge. Not true. You can be 90 years old. Your brain has been made in such a way that it is able to learn. Synapses will connect with each other when you begin to learn. You can change. We cannot use anything as an excuse. We cannot say, my previous pastor was like this. You know, or my, my parents were like this. A lot says, do not use this example anymore. This proverb will no longer be used. I am like this because of that. Now, if it is used in a positive way, I think great. You know, my previous pastor was a fantastic guy and that's why I'm like this. That's fine. You know, you know so why are you here? Then it's time to move on. Or he died or something like that. You know. <laughs> hey, come on lah. You don't have to. Yeah, it was time to, pretty much. That's fine. My parents were such wonderful people and you know, they taught us values and because of that, we are like this. That's good. We are generous because my dad was generous. Excellent. But, you know, they used to do this to us in church. They marginalized us. They spoke ill of us. So why did you not like stand up and go? No lie, you know. We cannot move forward if we are using the past circumstances relationships and what not in the journey that the Lord is calling you need to let go you need to let go and you really must you know why because the Lord has fantastic plans for the people in this church next year you don't know whether who's going to be here. You probably have been raised to a particular level and sent out. Uh, not many people want to do that. Huh? But when you are called to be an apostle, this is what you do. You raise up people and you send them out. Amen? And you guys will need to capture the essence of what is in your pastor's heart when he set this church up and just the environment as well. So the environment is just like a, a, you know, something that I'm using to share something deeper, a deeper truth. The condition of our heart is really important. Amen? And uh, I pray 
that I was able to get my point across because I, I just didn't know how to go about this, but I was certain that the Lord said, share this. Amen. I hope that you were able to receive something from this. Amen. And do something about it. I say, Lord, here I am, Lord. Send me. Who said that? No, don't mention my name. I know I just said that five seconds ago, but who said that in the Bible? You guys are like all lawyers in this place. All of y'all. Who said that? Okay. I, that's a very powerful statement to make. I mean, if you look at it, at the context in which it was said, here I am, Lord, send me. Super powerful. Brings tears to the eyes. Okay, you guys need handkerchiefs or anything like that? Tissue papers? No? Fine? Nope. I know y'all are bored to tears. That's why y'all are crying. <laughs> okay. I'm going to end here. And I'm just going to end by saying... Uh, Yeah, guys, this is a new year, amen? It's up to us if you want it to be same old, same old, same old, same old, same old. It's your choice if that's what you want. But that's not what the Lord wants. He wants us to go on a journey with Him. And a big part of that journey, there's one guy there that looks like a Hindi actor, he just freaked me out. Sorry, that was not part of it. That's not part of the journey, okay? You guys, I'm sure he's got his own journey. You guys don't have to follow him. A big part of this journey involves you making that decision. I want to be sent. Here I am, Lord. Send me. It's easy to make that statement without causing any change to happen in your heart, but that's what the Lord wants. A change in your mindset, in your heart. Uh, the psalmist say that thoughts emanate from the heart. As a man thinketh in his heart, now the experts have discovered that thoughts actually do emanate from the heart. Uh, this is just the processing unit. Thoughts actually come from here. You know? So if we are not willing for this to be changed, there's not going to be much change in your life and the lives of the people around you. Amen. As I mentioned earlier, the family unit. Hey, if you are single, he's still going to use you. You are a weapon. You know, I, I, and I mean that in a positive way, not in a negative way, because weapon can also mean something negative. But yes, that family unit needs to go through this process of change, of saying, yes, Lord, we want to make our, we want to open up our hearts to people, not just to the Lord, but we want to reach out to people. Amen? And then we start functioning as how an apostolic church functions. Because that is what the Lord has placed in the heart of your pastor. And that hence what we see in our services and in the environment when we, when we come here. Amen. So thank you very much for the opportunity to share. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you.